I bought this camera because I wanted to do some professional interior work with a Sub 250G Cinewoop. Flywoo products really appeal to me because of their quality, the looks, and how light they are. I know this isn't the lightest camera on the market, I know you could totally naked your own GoPro 10, but I just wanted to try this out and it's got its own nifty features, which I'll explain in my review. I hope you enjoy the review, please click the thumbs up button or thumbs down button, but most importantly, subscribe so I can bring more FPV content to you. And if I helped you make a decision on buying this camera today, please consider purchasing through the affiliate link in the description. Any questions you have, just leave a comment. I'll be there for you. Woo! Let's fly! Alright, I'm excited. What about you? Alright, so we got some instructions, a sticker, some wipes. Maybe you want to clean your hands before you touch your brand new uh, GoPro microfiber cloth perfect for those times your lens gets dirty let's take this baby out oh yeah that's a beauty optional touchscreen that I purchased and balanced power plug we got uh, different mounting solutions and extra power plugs so for reference I mean you don't fly with this but the touchscreen is 20.89 grams. The smaller mount, which I'll explain later, is 0.82 grams. This traditional style like finger, like GoPro mounting system, 1.86 grams. And then the screws, oops, 0.61 grams. And let's just measure this thing for fun. It is 0.39 grams. You use this it's 3.32 grams and let's check the UV filter 1.36 grams and the GP10 itself let's reset it they say it's 44 grams let's see oh yeah right on the money 44.02 grams so which ones would I fly with my quad well definitely this um, the hardware oh crap and this and well I mean my quad already has the wires on it but you know I'll just put it on there so total is 48.24 grams that's pretty good I mean compared to GoPro bones they said when you add the, the UV filter or the ND like the protective cover lens uh, the GoPro bones is 60 grams so the GP10 is about 15 grams lighter than the GoPro bones so the kit comes with two mounts shown here I'm probably gonna use this one because this one fits into the you know GoPro base those 3D printed bases but the smaller one I assume that it's for something like this um, these smaller type mounts that I don't see that's very common at least in my quads but you would use this smaller one you bolt it right there and then it would just like plop on you screw it on right this is my Explorer and plenty of my quads have this type of mount so it's like the traditional GoPro mount that accepts these fingers so this is the one used for it so the reason why I like an adjustable base is if you want to fly slower or faster usually you would adjust the angle of the camera right here then as you fly towards the horizon like say if you put it flat you'll be flying towards the horizon like this but if you bring the angle up when you fly towards the horizon it's gonna be like that and that makes it fly very fast so you want the action camera to match that angle usually say like the camera is like facing up like that I like to actually angle my camera just one degree more just a little bit more just in case you just want to fly really a little bit faster than the horizon and your action camera will capture it perfectly and it's super wide so it won't look like you're looking at the sky okay so as I put it on there this thing only goes in one way uh, if you put it the other way it won't want to go in but you put it in this way it, it has this little lip and it just goes in flush so this hex nut side is facing us right now. Just gonna pop 
pop the washer right on there. 10 hours later. So remember to drop in the nut here into the nicely shaped hole for it. And then you just put your finger on there and finish tightening it up. All right, let's start this baby up. I'm curious if uh, how good this touch screen attaches to it. So I'm just gonna use the balance plug for now. So you see the flat side here? You just plug it in. Stick it in there. And the balance plug to the battery. There you go, oops. Yep, there we go. Oh, that's sick, you can hear the fan. And there's like a LED status light. And let's uh, turn it on. guys so for the touch screen it was optional and it has these like grooves that match up with you know, some of the holes here I'll line up the top one first like this nub here this top and then and then just get that you know the, the port right into the hole a little bit and then just, just snap the top first oh, you hear that and then the bottom one just push just wiggle a little bit and push it in and there you go that's in and then let's turn it on again that fan noise. oh man look at that gopro labs beta what okay probably just behaves like any other gopro right like you know i'm not gonna walk you through this <laughs> all right power button yeah get rid of that because the unit has wi-fi you can connect to your GoPro using your Quick app. It's pretty easy to set up. To connect it, I had to use my touch screen and turn on wireless settings. Without the touch screen, I have no idea. Probably look it up in the Flywoo manual. Once connected to the app, you can adjust your settings. And you can also check your exposure, which is nice. For the life of me, I can't find the ISO or shutter speed controls. Luckily, I still have the touch screen, so if I need to manually adjust, I'll just use that. In the kit includes these two power cables, which you can solder onto your FC, onto your positive and negative leads. That's where I usually do it. And on most of my quads, I already have a four pin version, but unfortunately it won't work with the GP10, but it does work with my old trusty SMO 4K. So what I have to do is basically just, you know, lift up these tabs with tweezers and just pull this out and pull this one out as well and stick it on there and it should be able to work with both cameras because if you see the three pin still fits you just have to put it lower like this you know lower in the port and all those was a bit of a gap the camera will still power on fine and it's still quite solid so I'm pretty excited that you know with the three pin I can still use both cameras here's the optional ND filter set it's got everything you need from ND4 all the way to ND64. And it's also got a CPL filter, which I've never tried. Apparently it's supposed to reduce glare and reflections off like glass and stuff like that. So I'm excited to try that out someday. But I usually use these ND filters just to reduce shutter speed. So you get that creamy, dreamy look while you're flying fast. Uh, without it, you know, your shutter speed, if it's set on auto to compensate for like the sun, things can appear way too sharp and it could look like you put your cell phone on your quad and started recording. But you know, looking at this, it still looks pretty raw, you know, it, it adds a different effect. So it depends on you, the artist. This is how the UV filter comes off. So basically just pull it off, right? It's really easy. We're out here in beautiful Squamish Valley. We got a river cutting through and waterfall with mountains. I brought out the Flywoo Explorer LR and the iFlight Chimera Pro. And we're gonna full send them and see what kind of footage the GP10 can do. Right now it's set at 4K 30 FPS. So it's, you see how it's, it's overexposed right now. So we have to pick the ND filter that will, you know, properly expose it. 
Okay, so, you know, usually it's ND32 for me. Let's take a look. Uh, you see the blue sky appeared and I'm shooting uh, 1 60th of a second the shutter speed. So it'd be perfect. You still get that dramatic blur. Your ISO minimum should be 100. I set my max ISO to 400. That way you could really tell if your ND filter is working. Because if your ISO maximum is set to 1600, whichever ND filter you put on, the GoPro is still going to properly expose it. And you'll be wondering why your footage is either too bright or noisy. This is recorded in 4K 120 FPS, 1 240th of a second, slowed down in post 75%. This feature would stand out even more if I had a subject running in the scene, which I'll try next time. The sub 250G quad I'm flying is called the Explorer and because it's so light, sometimes it would shake a little bit in the wind, especially when you're flying fast. The in-body stabilization of the GP10 is pretty awesome. You can see it got rid of all the shakes. This is filmed at 5K, 30 FPS. Flywoo put a fan in the back of the GP10 to prevent it from overheating, filming for long periods of time. I was a little concerned about the fan noise because sometimes I like to leave the motor sounds on my videos. It just makes it more intense. When you first start recording, you'll hear the fan noise. But as soon as you lift off, all you hear is the motors and props. So all my concerns went away after that. One of my subs commented how he was concerned about the unit overheating during the flight. So I went out today and took this video for you guys. This is shot at, I think, the most energy intensive setting, possibly, besides 5K 60 FPS, but this was shot at 4K 120 FPS. I flew my Explorer nonstop for 17 minutes straight and there was no sign of overheating. There's a lot of ventilation holes built into the camera and because with the fan and you're flying at the same time, I don't think you'll have an issue with overheating. And mind you, this is a bright sunny day. I mean, it's not the hottest day we had, but it's 26 degrees. So that's all I have for you. I sincerely hope you like this review. If you like it, please give a thumbs up. If you hate it, thumbs down, all good. Positive vibes, I'll hate you secretly. If you decide to purchase the Flywoo GP10 or GP9 today, please purchase through the affiliate links in the description below. I highly recommend purchasing the optional touchscreen and the ND filter set as well. If you purchase through those links, it'll help me out a little bit and to support my channel so I could keep providing great content for you guys. The full video you see here is already on my channel. It's called Chill Out 3. Go check it out. See you on the next one.